the Plank Road. This is the most famous photo of the Plank Road taken from the Plank Road mural in the Smithsonian Institute. It is presently being used on the stationery of the village of North Syracuse. Note the marker S2 denotes two miles to Syracuse. The side with the hay wagon was planked so the merchants could travel into Syracuse with their goods, and the opposite side was dirt when the wagons traveled back home, usually empty or with a few supplies. This replica of the first plank road of the United States ran from the corner of Main Street and 7th North Street through North Syracuse to Central Square. It was built in 1846 and traveled until 1913. It was 16 and a half miles long at a cost of $23,000 to build. The hemlock planks were 8 feet wide and 4 inches thick. They covered one lane while the other lane was unpaved, just dirt. The entire distance was paved in 1914 and 1915 and became the present day Route 11, often referred to as Main Street. North Syracuse is famous for its history of its growth on the Plank Road. The first toll gate on the Plank Road was what is now the corner of Main Street and Malloy Road in Mattydale in the 1800s. Note the planked side with the wagon on it and the dirt side next to it. There were four toll gates, each connected to a house where the gatekeeper lived. The second was in the vicinity of Main Street and Circle Drive at Pencan Mall. The third was in Cicero in the area of present-day Main Street and Route 31. The fourth and last toll gate was on Main Street just before the Brewerton Bridge. Toll gate on Main Street and somewhere between Pine Grove Road and Circle Drive near Pencan Mall. The photo was taken in the late 1800s and was called Lily's Gate since Mr. Lilly was the gatekeeper. The fee for horse and wagon was 20 cents, 5 cents for a horse alone, 1 cent for each head of cattle, and no charge for pedestrians. The Jerry Rescue of October 1, 1851. Jerry was a 30 year old slave from Missouri who made his way to Syracuse by the Underground Railroad. He was rescued from Syracuse in a stagecoach which traveled the Plank Road to the toll gate in Cicero. The gate was quickly opened and they continued on to the Brewerton toll gate. History notes he was carried to Mexico, New York and on to Oswego, New York. From a deserted point on the lake, he was rowed out in a small boat to the underwater schooner which carried him to Kingston, Ontario where there were no slaves. He worked as a chair maker and soon after married. He lived a respectable life until October 8, 1853, when he died of TB. A statue of Jerry can be seen on North Salina Street in the Syracuse, commemorating this historical event. During the era of the Plank Road, you would occasionally see the sprinkling wagon. This wagon was filled with water and drawn by horses used on the dirt side to keep the dust down in the summer. This one stands in the historical village at Toll Road Park on Main Street in North Syracuse. Note in the background is the old Conway Schoolhouse. Newspaper article the date unknown, showing a mail wagon which traveled between Cicero and Syracuse entitled, It Was a Long Drive from Cicero on the Old Plank Road. This photo depicts the mail stagecoach traveling on the plank side and the open wagon on the dirt side. Kissing on the Old Plank Road. This is the title of the photo taken about 1910 which shows cousins Esther and Chet Ferguson 
kissing on the old plank road. They were probably visiting each other and played with homemade toys. No computers or Game Boys in those days. North Syracuse House. This later became Irish's Hotel. The photo was taken in the early 1900s. It was located on the Plank Road east of Chestnut Street. Photo of Mr. Wilbur with his two daughters and in the corner behind the lamppost is Bill Burnell. His son Bill Jr. was 100 years old in 1992. East side of Main Street, North Syracuse, across from Palmer Drive, looking north, where Main Street Elementary School now stands. You can see one side was with planks where the heavy loaded wagons traveled, and the other side just dirt for the empty wagons. On September 15, 1912, at 5 o'clock p.m., there was a horrendous tornado in the Pitcher Hill area. It hit schoolhouse number 7. 111 buildings were destroyed. The top photo shows damage to the Plank Road in the Pitcher Hill area, and the bottom is a photo showing damage to the buildings. It was one of the worst natural disasters ever to hit Onondaga County. Ernest S. Sampson was one of the first doctors in North Syracuse. His office was on Main Street, which later became Dr. Lonergan's office, and presently is Salinger's phot Photography. Dr. Sampson sold part of his land to the school district where the first school was built in 1869. Malone's Variety Store. This is located where the North Syracuse Post Office now stands and the house next door where Encore Beauty Salon operates. Jackson's Meat Market in the early 1900s. The location is 113 Main Street, on the right side of Main Street School. This later became Plews's Drug Store, then Mulhauser's Drug Store, and is presently the dollar store between the North Syracuse Post Office and the offices of attorneys Bertrand, Arno, Welch, and Putzer. This photo of 1895 is the corner of Main Street and Church Street. This was the corner general store, then owned by Valmers, which later became Harvey Brothers. Note the name Cicero Syracuse on the stagecoach. The driver was Daniel Van Alstein. Harvey Brothers Grocery Store in the mid-1900s on the corner of Main Street and Church Street, where the parking lot is now next to Quick Copy. This was the only grocery store in the area at that time. Quite a change from our present-day supermarkets. First Fire Truck in North Syracuse. The fire department was formally established in 1914 and had two hand-drawn chemical fire engines. In 1921, motor equipment was installed. North Syracuse Fire Department was the first established in the state. The first fire building was on Church Street across from Andrews Memorial Church. In 1921, a barn was purchased from Miss Anna Reed and moved to Ferguson Ave, which is presently the back of the newer constructed building facing Chestnut Street.